crew of the Southern Leader are on a fast turnaround mission in the Green Islands. Dwayne needs 18 dolabs from his three teams in just eight hours. Should be a good day. Hopefully the urchins are fat. But he also intends on spearing a bin or two of butterfish, meaning the bulk of the load will have to be collected by Team Raymond and Team Storm. The race is now on to see if it's the A-team or the young upstarts that will collect the most urchin. Raymond made a great start and already filled the first of his two dolabs. Storm and George are at a disadvantage as this is a new location for both of them. Having chosen a shallow spot to start with, they're in danger of ending up on the rocks. As for the urchins, not what they are hoping for. The first spot we jumped in at was not too flash. The urchins were real scattered and the row was really small, which made it hard work. They will need to find a better area and fast if they're going to have any chance of keeping up with the other crews. Not far away, Raymond is fighting shallow water surge, but raking up fat urchins. And he's also discovering why they ran over a crayfish pot earlier. The place is littered with them. When I see a good patch of crays, I can't really help but grab a few. It's a tasty snack for dinner, so why wouldn't you? But while Raymond is getting distracted by all the crayfish, across the bay, Storm has struck gold. Yeah, I was starting to get a bit worried there. Um, I was falling behind a bit, but I found a mint patch. So yeah, I was away from then, it was great. Finding their rhythm, the young bucks work together seamlessly, quickly gaining back the ground they lost searching for a spot. But just quietly, it's been the veterans leading the way. With two experienced divers on the one dinghy, this is already their second time back to the southern leader with their third bin. Glenn filled up a bin pretty quick, and I didn't find any butterfish. So we're going to have to back to the drawing board and head the other way, I think. Building up the market for butterfish is a great supplement for Dwayne's business. Because so few fish in this part of New Zealand, the stock's full. Diving for urchins is by far the most lucrative enterprise. But for Dwayne, bringing his passion and talent for spearfishing into the mix is an ideal situation. Hey, Green Bowman, it's a decent makey out there. Butterfish is going good. It's, like, so much fun. Economically, it's proven to be a tough one. You'd need about 100 fish per day per diver. Being able to spear as many butterfish as you can and, and make it viable financially. Hopefully, we can make it work down the track, you know, figure out a quicker streamlined method, really. Finishing off their first two bins, Raymond and Red Dog head back for the first time, and they've brought some familiar tunes along for the ride. The urchins are pretty fat, so yeah, can't complain. Doing pretty well. Good start to the morning, and I'm uh, just gonna keep chipping away, and that's why we're along here. So she's all right. <laughs> As always, there's no mucking around with Red Dog. It's balls to the wall, and his competitive nature is ferocious. We got Green and Dwayne on the boat. We actually real need to get into it, because they're real greedy, man. We're doing all right, though. Two of Southland's top divers, and we're only just behind them, and there's one of him. And to feed Red Dog's appetite further, he spotted that Dwayne has overfilled his bins. Well, what happens when you got to unload them, and the forklift puts them on top of each other? Thankfully, Raymond has a solution to the dilemma. Oh, chip, my G, Dwayne. Oh, chip, right? Yeah! Don't fill this. Don't fill this. Like, you can't overfill your bins too much, otherwise, um, yeah, when you go to unload them on the wharf, uh, Murray and the forklift ends up putting them too high, and all you can hear is just urchins crush. 
That's dollars gone. We can't have that. So me and Raymond might as well capitalise on a wee bit of that. I hope this kid is on. Oh, you're not too bad. I've seen worse. Blatant robbery complete. And a concentration going on. Followed by a bit of skillful crane operation. Yes. Nailed it. Nailed it. Yeehaw. And the A-team are off for round two. Righto, Ginger Dog, got some more bloody uh, dialects in there and go and keep playing today. Eh? But it's Dwayne and Glenn that continue to set the pace, pulling up kit after kit and are now close to filling five dolabs between them for the morning. Also in good form, Storm and George have been working at a steady pace and are ready to head back to unload. Started a bit slow, but um, we got gone to them at the end, and that's good. But the quality is a bit average, so we'll see if we can find some better ones next round. Pretty, pretty good, eh? A few kinners. I've seen Raymond drop a couple off before me, but he started early, so you know, should be going all right. Which way, Peaky? Storm is actually only 20 minutes behind Raymond. A quick changeover now will see him gain even further ground. A push here, yep. a shove there, and the boys are on their way. See you later. Just as the skipper and Glenn pull up for their third time. That was much easier. Moving to another spot, that was a more shower. Your urchins are out. The biggest size for the last one. Dwayne's appropriately chuffed for the morning's efforts. And even grabbed himself a sack of crayfish. The bun into them around. We've got a party on, so we need some. Considering that crayfish or lobster sell at market for $120 a kilo, it would be rude not to. While Dwayne's team unloads, out on the water, a game of cat and mouse is beginning to ensue. Raymond and Red Dog have half a dolav, but are now being pursued to their next spot by Storm and George, who are taking an inside track and now overtaking them for pole position. Red Dog could be pulling his hair out a lot sooner than that. At the rate that Storm and George are working, it's looking like the pack leader could be replaced within the next few hours. It's been a whirlwind trip for the crew of the Southern Leader. With a capacity order to fill and limited hours to do so, the divers have worked at a frantic pace all day. With Dwayne in search of butterfish, the competition between Team Raymond and Storm has been fierce. We're going to keep up with Raymond and hopefully win, you know? After the last pit stop... Oh, champ, bro! Yeah! Don't fall, this total... Storm has closed the gap on his mentor and is less than half a bit behind. But as always, experience is key, and quality is more important than quantity. You've got to check all your urchin. You can't just jump in the water, find a whole patch, and think, yeah, I'm on the money. Generally, those really big patches, the really good patches are the ones where there's all of them, and you've got to work hard for it. It's the way the ocean works. Pushing hard to keep pace, Storm goes deep. A quick test of the goods, and unfortunately this isn't exactly what he's after. There wasn't really much at the next spot, it's the trouble when you don't really know the area, so I guess I just have to sort of, you know, see where Dwayne and Raymond are and sort of mark it off them. When you're competing with someone like Red Dog, yeah, he doesn't tend to give much away, which is a bit of a bummer. Raymond, on the other hand, is really hitting his stride. Filling his nets at lightning pace and again grabbing a few crayfish while he's at it. Two full dolabs in two hours and Raymond and Red Dog are back to unload at the southern leader. 
Slowly, slowly coming right over here, dog. That's the one. Slowly getting there. Probably smoke like <laughs> half a packet of 50 gram in the weekend, so the lungs are a bit dusty on it. And... You were a bit slow this morning, I could tell, eh? I was like, <laughs> what's going on? It must be cool down there. Now, I'll give you a couple of hours and some ba ba boom into it now. It's one o'clock, so here yeah, we got a bit of time to make up for now, but Raymond's in the game. On to the money now, so. Make me rich. Oh, yeah, we just got to show you what happens when um, certain members of our crew fill their dialects up a bit too much and get a bit too greedy. Yeah, uh, it's something like this. Bloody <laughs> roastless ginger dog. Stranded on six. Working at a more subdued pace. If I get the chance, I'll always go spearfishing. The boys have been going well on the urchins today. So I've got a couple of hours up my sleeve, so I'm gonna sneak off and shoot some fish. To be a good spearfisherman, I suppose you've gotta have uh, a bit of hunting instinct in you. Butterfish, in general, aren't very hard fish to spear. It's a numbers game. Just keep sparing them till you get the, the quantity you need. Around the corner, Storm and George are at full throttle and taking advantage of some solid patches. Yeah, things got real good as the day went on, you know. It's what we're after, you know, finding good urchins. And yeah, I can't really ask for anything else than that. After a top effort, they're full up again and back to the southern leader to unload bins three and four for the day. We found some shallow urchins this time and yeah, it's been hard and they're actually pretty decent quality, so yeah, it should be good. There's still a good two and a half hours of dive time left in the day. Plenty of time to capitalise before the ship is locked down for the journey home. All day left so far. You can average about an hour of bin, you're doing real well. So six hours diving, six bins, you know, that's a good $800 for the day, which is always great. Right, should we crank it up, thank you. Raymond and Red Dog are on a prime spot of urchins. The only problem is the water here is shallow and navigating through a garden of boulders is no easy task. When you're working in a place such as Green Islands, you really got to be watching out. Don't want to lose the prop off your motor. Your outboard doesn't seem to go very well without a propeller. Raymond, on the other hand, doesn't seem concerned about the rocks at all. With an abundance of fat urchins and crusty friends walking about on the seafloor, he's in his happy place. Visibility was great. There was heaps of fat urchins in the shallow. I was going hard and kicking everyone's ass. Last kit full, and that's six dolabs for Team Red Dog. With less than an hour of dive time remaining in the day, guns it for the southern leader, leaving always dangerous towards the end of the day when divers are fatigued. One more bin for the day, so we thought we'll go up. Leave Raymond in the water. By the time I get back, we're already three quarters done, so. 
Which is all very well in theory, but if Red Dog doesn't complete the changeover quickly, Raymond will soon find himself stranded in the ocean with nowhere to go.